Welcome to the Money Answer Show with host Jordan Goodman. Whether you are starting out, deep into your retirement, or somewhere in between, the Money Answer Show has the know-how to help you. Now here's your host, Jordan Goodman. Welcome to the Money Answer Show. This is Jordan Goodman, your host. My guest this hour is Anne-Marie Sabbath. Uh, she is the author of two recent books, one called What Self-Made Millionaires Do That Most People Don't, and another book came out recently called Everyone Has a Book Inside Them. Welcome to the Money Answer Show, Anne-Marie. Thank you for having me on. Just give us a brief history of, of uh, you've been kind of business consulting and kind of business etiquette for a long time. Just give us a brief history of I ha- how you ca- came to uh, writing these books. Well, thank you. Uh, the brief history is I've, been, I've helped more than 200,000 individuals in helping their companies increase their bottom line. And about two years ago, I met someone and I had the awakening that I need to, needed to help individuals learn how to t- take what they are making and increase their own bottom line and become self-made millionaires. So that's how it happened. So let's just kind of look at the, the big picture on self-made millionaires. Uh, it, it, probably people think there aren't that many of them, or kind of give us a sense of how, how many actually can accomplish that. Actually, the funny thing is, is that I was amazed by it, Anyone can become a self-made millionaire. It's strictly a matter of knowing what it takes and being disciplined through habits. It has very little to do with money. It's more the discipline of their actions. Very good. Well, let's get right into it here. Um, And we'll start. Your book talks about 52 different ways uh, to create your own success. Um, And let's just start right at the top which is a lot about attitude. Your first kind of habit is to think big. So what do you mean by that? How should somebody wanting to become a success think big and still be realistic? Well, the way to think big, number one, is to have an end goal in mind and to know what they want at the end of the tunnel and every day to focus on that. So the point is they should use their time and energy like currency. Uh, You have to know where you're going in order to get there. And some people don't do that. So that's a big deal, to conceive it, to believe it, and to achieve it. That's it. So let's talk about the conceive part first. So, I mean, people can have big dreams, but how could they conceive of something that's actually realistic to accomplish? Well, the way to conceive it, uh, something that is realistic, is they have to set a goal, and then they have to know how they're going to accomplish it. They should write it. They should make sure they are around people who already have accomplished it so that they can up their mindset, their mentality, their surroundings based on the people around them, the books they read. They have to act as though they already have it by the way they act. And that's a very big part of conceiving it. And then the next step after conceiving it is to believe. So what can people do to... Believe something that's real and not just, you know, some fantasy. It's very, again, it sounds like it's difficult and it's very easy. The way you believe something and know it will happen, it may take 20 years, is you write it down. When you think it, you're conceiving it. When you write it down, you are believing it. It becomes a reality by having something concrete. That is what I strongly recommend. And then the last third will happen by having them know what they want and then having a documented form of it and then staying focused. And one of the things I must say is they must make sure they tell no one what they want except somebody who has already created, manifested that success. Why should they tell no one? Because they'll let the secret out? The reason they should tell no one is people often talk the walk rather than walk the talk. So they should take their actions and make it happen rather than telling people what they're going to do. As they say, talk is cheap. And in this case, it definitely is. And then the third step is to achieve. So you're saying once you've conceived of something, once you've written it down, that you believe in it, you have to put into action. A lot of people can talk, but not actually put into action. Is that what you're saying? Yes. And it's a process. It's nothing that you can do with the snap of the finger. If it starts fast, it's going to end fast. 
as one of the 30 self-made millionaires who I did interview for this book says, you can do it. You just have to want it. So the point is, as they are in the midst of achieving or realizing it, and again, it was going to take a while, what they need to do is constantly surround themselves with positive words, with positive books, with positive people who have achieved it. They should make sure they read something about somebody who manifested this particular success. And then the next secret is to define what success means to you. This is what people often call what the why is. Is that what you mean by that? It's the why. Success means different things to different people. Although this book is about how to create your own success, what's fascinating is many people create their own success, their seven-figure status, because they want to help other people. And that's a real important thing. So what is their success? Many people want their success to be to balance their life. And so, so sometimes financial freedom will help them to be able to balance. Other people want to earn enough money in order to actually do what they love, to follow their passion. So the key is, it's a matter of what is success to you, and that's important for people to define before they actually move in that direction. You've got some examples of some self-made millionaires and what their why is, and many times it's loving what they do while making money at the same time. Is that the most common theme? Absolutely. The most common theme is do what you love and love what you do. And if I may say, approximately 75% of self-made millionaires are entrepreneurs. And entrepreneurs are someone who have found a passion, found a service or product and love it. Yes. And that is your next secret is to find your passion. So for people who, if that doesn't come to them right away, how can you find your passion if, if nothing kind of comes to you immediately? Well, what happens is your passion is within an arm's length distance of you. It's what you do when you're not working. It is what you do for fun. That is genuinely your passion. And so the question is, how do you monetize that? And once again, it's not the answer. It is the question. For instance, Jordan, I love telling people what to do. So that's why I started my consulting business three decades ago, and I did it in the form of training in order to monetize helping people by telling them what to do. So the secret is find out what you love and then ask who, who has done something in a similar way and monetize it. And then follow them. It has to be unique, though. I mean, you just can't do exactly what other people have done. You've got to have some kind of a unique twist to make this work. Well, well, you know what's interesting? It's really not what it is. It's how you market it. You have to believe in it 110% for other people, too. I can guarantee you, when I began my etiquette business 30 years ago, not one soul would have given me a penny. And I knew, I knew there was a market. I knew I could help people be successful by knowing what to do and when domestically and internationally. And so they actually bought my passion, my belief. And this is what happens. You can have a widget company and someone can say, how could that widget be of interest or need to? That is what it's about. You have to find your passion and then you monetize it by figuring it out. It doesn't simply happen. You have to think about it. You have to find people who have done it. You may intern with them. You may ask them to do what you can do to help them to develop it. You may become a partner with them. Who knows? So the idea is it's a matter of figuring it out. And then your next step is exactly that, is to believe in yourself. You have to have strong belief to, as you say, it kind of radiates out. Uh, people can see if you don't really believe in it yourself. Is that right? Absolutely. You walk it. You talk it, you radiate what you believe. And what happens is it becomes part of you. Your service or product becomes an extension of you. So what happens is I've learned over the years, people really don't buy my service. They will buy the enthusiasm, the belief that I have in it, number one, by being sincerely interested in them. And then eventually they may ask about my interest. So you really have to muster up belief before you even walk out the 
door before you even reach anyone else. That's what it's about. You have to believe in yourself more than anyone else believes in you. And then you said to visualize it. Once you believe in it, you've got to kind of see what the path looks like. What are some steps to visualizing it in a successful way? Well, well, this is one of my favorite steps. And Jordan, I can tell you, anytime I talk with and we have a, 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 a conversation, medium talk versus small talk, I ask them, how many write down your goals? When I tell you fewer than 3% of people actually document their goals or visualize, no wonder there are so few self-made millionaires. So visualization means you ask yourself what you want, you write it down, and then you put it three places. My recommendations are you put it in the notes section of your phone, you put it in your wallet, you put it under your mat, or if you have a car, put it in your glove compartment. By doing that, you are, if you've surrounded yourself with it, and the last third will happen. You never stop. You do, do something every day toward that visualization. And by doing that, I guarantee you it happens. I've actually gotten anything I have wanted in my life. Sometimes it took 20 by visualizing, by manifesting it. And, and I will not go into it now, however, I can tell you, you and your listeners would have your hair standing up on your arms if I told you that it does happen. Very good. We're going to take a break. Uh, this is Jordan Goodman of The Money Answer Show. My guest this hour is Anne-Marie Sabbath. Uh, She has written a book called What Self-Made Millionaires Do That Most People Don't, 52 Ways to Create Your Own Success. Uh, You can find out more at her website, which is annemariesabbath.com. We'll be back after this. You've been listening to The Money Answer Show with Jordan Goodman. If you have a question for Jordan or his guest, please call us now at 866-472-5790. That's 866-472-5790. Now back to Jordan. Welcome back to The Money Answer Show. This is Jordan Goodman, your host. My guest this hour is Anne-Marie Sabbath. She is the founder of AtEase.com and the author of a book called What Self-Made Millionaires Do That Most People Don't. 52 Ways to Create Your Own Success. You can find out more about her at annemariesabbath.com. Welcome back to the show, Anne-Marie. Thank you for having me, Jordan. So we were talking about the different uh, secrets to becoming a self-made millionaire, and you're saying one of them is to set meaningful goals and, and write them down. What are the difference between meaningful and not meaningful goals? Well, a meaningful goal is something that you really want that is a tangible, that will assist you in your future, personally and professionally. And I'll give you a real quick overview of something that was documented in a book called What They Don't Teach You at Harvard Business School. 100 individuals who happened to be MBA students were surveyed. 84 of the 100 who were asked, do you have goals, said no. 30 of the 100 individuals had goals only in their minds and only three percent or three individuals had documented goals the long and short of that is 10 years later three individuals who had documented goals one decade before were making 10 times more than the 97 other people so a goal is essential number one and documenting it number two is the way it is manifested so that you're working smarter rather than harder. You say it's also important to take control of your life. A lot of people, I guess, sign up with a company and basically they've turned their life over to that company. How can people take control of their life? Well, it's not the situation. It's what happens to it. And this is what they see in this book with these 30 self-made millionaires. There are people who (laughs) were homeless, There are people who, there was a woman who didn't have enough food stamps, if you you can even imagine, to feed her milk. She had to feed her baby water. However, she took control, and X amount of years later, after getting training, she actually began and ended up having 200 employees, and she had a commercial cleaning business. So the point that I'm making is, it's taking what you have and making it work. Take control of situations. And then the next thing is to have a strong work ethic and keep your word. You find a lot of people go into business and do not keep their word, and that really holds them back? That's why we're in business, Jordan. 
let me tell you, I am stunned at the number of people who say they're going to do something and don't. And here. Here's what my, I learned two things from everyone, what to do and what not to do. And the point is, if you keep your word to yourself, you're going to keep it to other people. So the point to this is keep your word. When you say you're going to do something, finish a task by a certain time, you do it because you're keeping your word to yourself. This is essential for creating your own success. If it's a matter of saving X amount of money a month of only pre-planning purchases, it doesn't matter what it is. Keeping your word is essential. And you're saying to be a person of integrity as well. Uh, again, this is exceptional. A lot of people are not do not have integrity, and that makes you stand out. Is that what you're saying? It sounds like it's a normal thing. However, it really is one of the 52 secrets. And again, I won't go into the entire story. However, a woman genuinely who ate out of dumpsters whose mother couldn't work because she had ended up being an operations manager of a company and she found that someone was embezzling 1.5 million dollars this woman as the operations manager told the out-of-state owner long story short she was able to get the business back in the black and the owner turned the business over to her because she wasn't looking for that. She simply wanted to get a paycheck and pay her bills on time. So being ethical, being having integrity takes you far. Cream always rises. Then you said to be a time master. What are some ways that people can control their time better? Well, I'll tell you the way I learned it. I sure wasn't born perfect, and I'm still working on it. However, the way people should manage their time is very easy. Write down the time they have to leave rather than the time they have to be somewhere. Give themselves false deadlines by knowing they are going to have something completed before the time they have told someone or themselves. And you're saying to be punctual is important. Again, these sound like obvious things, but you're saying a lot of people are late. Is that right? Are you kidding me? Yes. Yes. Listen, this means even for your family, when you're meeting family members, children, a friend, a casual gathering, you're always there on time if it's a luncheon, if it's a meeting, or at minimum of five minutes early because anything can happen. And people who can manage their time can also manage their money. Think about that. And you're saying to stay focused is important as well as part of the work ethic. Staying focused is very easy. It's so easy to, to divert. However, I have noticed self-made millionaires who I have met over the years know what they're going to do, and then they go ahead and stay focused on the task rather than diverting. It's this easy to get distracted. It works. It, it's very easy to get distracted. Distracted, and that's why many people do something, complete a task before the day begins or at the end of the day, and know that a certain percentage of their day will be spent reacting. Then you say you have to have a thirst for knowledge and be a lifelong learner. How does that contribute to your becoming a self made millionaire? Well, be, having a thirst for knowledge is essential to continue to grow. In fact, self made millionaires tend to read more than watch TV. So learn something new every day. Day. Whether it's something you read online, whether it's something you learn from someone else, ask more questions than you share about yourself. This gives you the creativity, the knowledge to continue to grow mentally, emotionally, intellectually, and spiritually. This is how it works. You also say it's important for uh, to become organized, to stay organized, and become what you call a minimalist. How does that help you become successful? Well, that's a big one. In fact, you probably were uh, peeking at uh, what I was doing yesterday. A minimalist means anything you have not used for a year, give away, throw away, or sell. The less clutter you have in your life, the more successful you will be. So simple cleanliness, and when I say cleanliness, getting rid of clutter is essential. And that is one of the 52 secrets that many people have yet to master. In addition to being a minimalist, you say you have to plan ahead. So is, is, it, is all writing it down? What, what are some tips in planning ahead successfully? Well, planning ahead is, yes, you write down what you're going to do, and then you stay on task. You stay focused. That's important. Always schedule time to be able to think, to be able to make that happen. Leave a minimum of 20% of your day open. 
so that you can react and you're not frustrated when someone asks you to do something that might be a way of helping them. Then you'd say it's important to be efficient and build a team. You can't do it all yourself. What are some tips in building a team successfully? Well, to build a team successfully, it's essential to hire people who know what you do not know. That's number one. Once you do that and you want to delegate, anything that you have done successfully three times should be created as a system. And this way, business owners, entrepreneurs should spend more time working on business than in business, a minimum of 70% a day on business rather than in business. You're saying it is important to delegate to others. Is that difficult for people who become a self-made millionaire to not do it themselves and, and trust somebody to be delegated to? Exactly. It's very easy to be a micromanager. The key is recognize when you're not uh, available, your, your team member will take care of it when you give the person the confidence to be able to do it and also empower, give that person uh, know-how to do it and then let that person make mistakes. It's a so what. That's how they learn and this frees you up to be able to be creative, to continue to grow your entity. Tell us a little bit about what people can find when they go to your website, annemariesabbath.com. Well, they can find a lot of things. Um, on my website, annemariesabbath.com, com. They can basically find the 10 books that I've written. They can find the book, What Self-Made Millionaires Do, that most people don't. It will direct them right to Amazon. And then they can also find something that I did uh, within the last three months. My 10th book came out. And the reason I'm even mentioning it, everybody has a book inside of them, is I wrote that to give people the know-how for generating passive income especially people who are business owners, people who have a story to tell. It's a wonderful way to be able to market your service or your business. And I've given them every piece of know-how that I have learned and teaching them. I taught them how to do it efficiently through this book. So that's what they will see on my website, annemariesabbath.com. Very good. We're going to take another break. This is Jordan Goodman of The Money Answer Show. My guest this hour is Anne Marie Sabbath. Uh, her website is annemariesabbath.com. Her latest book is called What Self-Made Millionaires Do That Most People Don't, 52 Ways to Create Your Own Success. We'll be back after this. You've been listening to The Money Answer Show with Jordan Goodman. If you have a question for Jordan or his guest, please call us now at 866-472-5790. That's 866-472-5790. Now back to Jordan. Welcome back to the Money Answer Show. This is Jordan Goodman, your host. My guest this hour is Anne Marie Sabbath. She's the author of What Self Made Millionaires Do That Most People Don't 52 Ways to Create Your Own Success. You can find out more at her website, annemariesabbath.com. Welcome back to the show, Anne Marie. Thank you for having me, Jordan. So, one of the next things you say is to go the extra mile and take some calculated risks. What do you mean by that? Exactly. You have to risk failure in order to experience success. And so a calculated risk is something that you may have never done. And that's why it's so important to surround yourself with people who have already accomplished what you want. They will give you the confidence to be able to do what you know you want to do logically. And yet emotionally, you may not have the guts to begin. Half of it is thinking about it. So a risk is doing something that you may have never done. You have to take a step and do it. That's a big deal. And part of it is you're not always going to succeed. So you're saying you have to turn a failure into an opportunity. How do you do that? Exactly. You see that a failure is one step closer to success. You know, it's very easy to mope after something has not gone right. However, the secret to success is you pick yourself up, you brush yourself off, Ask yourself what you could have done better. Again, surround yourself with people who have already been there, done that, and said, oh, yes, you know what? I failed. Let me tell you how I made it happen. So it's important to begin by taking calculated risks, small risks, and then build into larger ones. There are no should-haves. It's a matter of do it, make it right, and correct yourself and keep moving forward. If you have a flat tire when you're on vacation you don't turn around and go home you fix it and keep moving 
And they're saying persevering is important, too, because it's not always going to happen instantly. People probably think they get an idea and it happens very quickly. It's, it's a longer-term game. Perseverance is one of the biggest secrets. You have to do whatever it takes to get the job done. You don't have to have a high IQ. You better have a darn high EQ or emotional quotient and stay focused. It's not going to be easy. If it were so easy, more than 3% of people in the world would be self-made millionaires. So it's essential to keep going. How how is it uh, that the Internet has made it possible for people to become successful quickly as opposed to you don't have to do everything in person in your local place. You can do it all over the the country, all over the world, actually. Has that made it easier to become a self-made millionaire? Absolutely. In fact, online businesses are one of the fastest growing businesses and the most lucrative businesses because there is sweat equity involved versus the um, product or service that's already been created. Organizations that are successful, that have high profit margins, will have just-in-time products. So they will know what they will need from past years, what they need in their inventory to be able to make it happen. And responsiveness is the most important thing. They could have the best thing since sliced bread. However, being responsive is the the name of the game. So you talked about developing a high emotional uh, quotient, or EQ as they call it. The first aspect of that is to listen up. What do you mean? A lot of entrepreneurs tend to not listen to other people and don't get good feedback? Well, I would say unseasoned entrepreneurs may not listen. However, once you realize that people are much more interesting than you because there's something to be learned, you tend to listen. And that's what makes people curious. That's what creates the next service or product by listening to what what people's needs and wants are. And you're saying don't be afraid to ask. Some people are afraid to ask and therefore they don't get good market intelligence. Is that what you're saying? What happens is when someone says no, you have to, should not be afraid to ask. No means not now, not the right time, too busy. So you always answer. You always get the answer of yes at the end. May I contact you in six months? Perhaps would there be a better time? Always get people to say yes. That's the most important thing. Even if they have said no, get them to say yes at the end. They often will say yes to simply get you off their back. And that's how it works. Muster up the courage to get people to say yes. How does that sound to you? Do you agree with that, Jordan? Absolutely. I always say make it easy for people to say yes and hard for them to say no. (laughs) And then you'll be successful. You also say it's important to uh, pay it forward. And throughout the book, you do talk about giving back. I mean, normally people think of becoming a millionaire as taking from others, getting money to get paid for something as opposed to giving. Why does giving make you successful? Well, giving makes you successful, number one, because you are preparing to receive by giving. It doesn't matter if you tithe, if you give your time, you give your energy, your expertise, paying it forward is what it's about. And I can tell you throughout the years, if I see that something's not going the way I want it, the way I make it happen is I will make a point of paying it forward more than I have done in the past. And I can tell you when I am ready for something, it always comes my way because I have more you owe me's than I owe you's. That's how it works. Give to others, and when you need their assistance, they will help you, or people within six individuals of them will be accessible for you. That's what paying it forward is about. There's like the universal law of reciprocity, that when you give something, people automatically want to give you back something, and that tends to help both sides. Always. And you do it, even if you're not going to get help from that person It will happen in another way. You also have the confidence to ask because you have paid it forward along the way. Then you say it's important to nurture your bodies and minds. Um, So exercising is important. How does exercise help you become a millionaire? Well, exercise helps to stimulate 
you mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. I hate exercising. And that was one of the four secrets that I had to master in order to achieve the success. And so the key is you don't have to love everything. You simply do it. And what it does is it allows you to be able to be much more or intellectually, physically, uh, emotionally, and spiritually stimulating. It's so important to exercise your body in order to stay on high drive, in order to create your own success. And then you say you want to take time to think. People get so involved in doing things that they don't kind of think strategically. Is that what you're saying? Well, thinking, it could be strategic. It's simply thinking. I don't care if it's a matter of staying in the shower five extra minutes and saying, this is my think time. I swim and I can't talk, which is great. And so that is my time to strip think. Whatever it is, stay in bed five minutes longer and talk to no one. Do whatever you're going to do. People meditate, people do yoga. Whatever it is, every day you must hear yourself think. That is one of the big secrets to success. A solution that you choose find will come to you when you actually take time to think. And then you say it's important to associate with like-minded people. Uh, that people often say your success is similar to the five people most close to you. Um, so how do you create a circle of successful people if in the past you've not been with successful people? Well, today more than ever, Jordan, it's easy. What you do is go online. Find someone who you want to be a role model. Read articles about them, and that is your scheduled meeting with them. Invest in a book that they have written. There are people around who would love to be your mentors, your advisors. I tell people who buy the book, What Self Millionaires Do, I say to them at the end of the book, I want you to email me, and they can text me, I don't care, any what the, success, the secrets that they have not yes, yet mastered, and I actually help them, and there's no hook going on. I will help them by holding them account to create their own success. Sometimes you simply need a guidance. You need a coach. You need, need somebody who will be there to say, I'm so proud of you. That's what it's about. You say to find a brain trust advisor. What do you mean by that? A brain trust advisor is someone who may not be a manager. It's somebody who has created what you want and they will guide you along the way. And you're open-minded to them. So maybe there's something that you want to know about or you haven't done quite right they will guide you. They will coach you. This is what a brain trust advisor is. And so Napoleon Hill, the author of Think and Grow Rich, created that term. Someone who wants to help you and that who you will be open to regarding their counsel. In general, you say it's important to have a positive uh, outlook on life. What difference does that make for an entrepreneur to become self-made millionaire? Well, first of all, there's always a pony inside. The worst situation, the most negative situation can turn into a positive one when you have the right outlook. That's what it's about. Always know that even in a room full of manure, there is a pony inside. So think positive. Very good. We're going to take another break. Uh, this is Jordan Goodman of The Money Answer Show. My guest this hour is Anne-Marie Sabbath. Uh, she is the author of the book we've been talking about, What Self-Made Millionaires Do That Most People Don't, 52 Ways to Create Your Own Success. You can find out more at her website, which is annemariesabbath.com. We'll be back after this. You've been listening to The Money Answer Show with Jordan Goodman. If you have a question for Jordan or his guest, please call us now at 866-472-5790. That's 866-472-5790. Now back to Jordan. Welcome back to The Money Answer Show. This is Jordan Goodman, your host. My guest this hour is Anne-Marie Sabbath. Uh, she has done a book we've been talking about called What Self-Made Millionaires Do That Most People Don't. And she's done another book we're going to talk about now called Everyone Has a Book Inside Them. You can find out more at her website, annemariesabbath.com. Welcome back to the show, Anne-Marie. Thank you again for having me, Jordan. So what was the inspiration for this Everyone Has a Book Inside Them? Well, the reason everybody had a book inside of them, Jordan, was I did 55 book signings in a six-month period. And while I was doing the signings, I met wonderful people and told them this was my 10th book. And they said, oh, I wish I could write a book. And 150 times I said, everybody has a book inside of them. And when I returned from 
this book signing in December of 2018, I said, I have to write this book. I have to help people get the book out of them. And so that's what prompted it. So how do you know, uh, if you have a book inside you, how can you figure out what it is? There's so many books that have been published that's different than what's already out there. Well, this is a very easy answer. Number one, when in this book, people will see that the first step to finding out the book inside of them is to take 30 days to think. They should ask themselves, what do they read that they love? That's probably the genre. What is it that somebody asks them consistently? And that is probably the topic that they want to write about. It's something they've experienced. It's something that they have done throughout their life. And they have become the expert in that particular topic. You you have a section about what prompted other authors to write their first books. What are some inspirations that have led people to write their first books? I love these people. Yes, I interviewed 15 other authors, and many things have prompted them. One woman was divorced, and she dated like mad, and she wrote a book called Kissing Frogs, The Path to a Prince. Another woman did blogs, and she uh, had so many posts that her followers said, you must write a book. Another man is an investment counselor. And he decided to write a book based on the most commonly asked questions that people asked him along the way. And so what happens is there is a need based on what you do consistently. And the book, the book topic is right in front of you. That's why I really encourage people to begin by taking 30 days to think. They will come up with what their book is. I guarantee you. You talk a lot in the book about writer's block and uh, worry and you know self doubt and all the things you have to go through to actually get the book done. What are some ways to overcome all of that? Well, if they talk to me, they're going to find out real fast. There, any of those dirty doubts will be dispelled. They can buy a ream of paper, write down those dirty doubts, tear them up, and if they're still in their minds, write them down again and tear them up until they are gone. That's number one. Number two, they must surround themselves with authors. Any budding author must surround himself or herself with a bona fide author. And by doing, authors will let them know there's no magic to this. It's a matter of staying focused, being disciplined, writing every day, scheduling writing appointments with yourself, and making sure you keep your word. That one sounds uh, familiar, doesn't it? Yes, indeed. So you say you should let your voice start talking when you're writing. What does that mean? Just kind of write whatever comes to your mind? What that means is you want to let your writing voice speak by taking time to think. And when you have a scheduled writing appointment, subconsciously you will be thinking about the topic that you will be writing the following day. Your inner writing voice will speak. It took me seven books to figure this out, and I have to, my inner writing voice and I really have bonded. And so every day, it's essential to write something related to your your book. People write every day. They text, they email. Why don't they take that energy and put it in the form of a manuscript? So there are the choice of self-publishing, which is quite easy to do today, or getting a publisher. What are the pros and cons of each? The pros and cons, well, first of all, if you happen to have a publisher, terrific. They will buy your book. If you do not know of a publisher or you've had rejections, it's a so what. You self-publish. Today, more than ever, self-publishing is very common, and it doesn't really matter. What matters is how you sell your darn book. That's what it's about. People think that a publisher will wave a magic wand and your books will sell. Self-publishing is fine. Now, there are times that somebody will pick up your book, and that's terrific. A publisher may want it. However, you know what? Unless you know how to hustle, they're not going to buy your next book, I guarantee you. They can go to Amazon.com. They can go to iUniverse. They simply follow what they need to do to self-publish. So once you've come out with it, 
how do you get the word out about it? Uh, the average person who hasn't done media before, how do they get the word out about it uh, if, if they're self-publishing? Well, the way I recommend it is, number one, S. M. Social media is the name of the game. I love my Barnes & Noble bookstores. However, more books sell on Amazon than anything else, whether it's a hardback, or paperback, whether it is a Kindle or Nook edition, whether it's an audiobook, books sell on Amazon. That is the name of the game. You talk about some things you should not do with your manuscript. What are some things to avoid doing with your manuscript? Oh, very good one. Many individuals have sabotaged themselves by giving their manuscript to an angry spouse or keeping a manuscript within reach of their canine or putting a manuscript, if you happen to print it out, if you happen to write in longhand, you'd be shocked how many people write in longhand, putting their manuscript uh away and forgetting where they put it. Many famous authors have actually done that. Or asking somebody to bring your manuscript to you and having them put that suitcase down uh, like Ernest Hemingway's wife did for just a moment to get a bottle of water at a train station, the suitcase was gone. Can you even imagine? So again, be very respectful with your manuscript and never give someone the original. When does it make sense to either be a ghostwriter or work with a ghostwriter if you just don't feel you can write it yourself? Well, I'm actually ghosting a former NFL football player's book. And the key is this. You can write your book. That's number one. If you want to ghost your book, let me tell you, you still have to come up with your ideas. You still need to tell your story in detail. So you can pay someone umpteen dollars. You still need to make sure that you have information to share and sequential information. Many people do that. Many people have much more money than time, and they choose to have their book ghosted. In fact, many, many books on the New York Times bestseller list are ghosted. Wow. <laughs> you wouldn't yeah. think that. You'd think that actually the author did them, but I guess that's, that's okay, right? It doesn't have to be you. It does not have to be you. Absolutely not. However, you still have to do the work. You still have to provide the information. So there is no free lunch. You talk about having a writing pledge of allegiance. What, what should be in your writing pledge of allegiance? Well, what I suggest is this. When people choose that to write a book, they must hold themselves accountable through a Writer's Pledge of Allegiance. And the Writer's Pledge of Allegiance includes several topics. I will give a few. Of the 10, number one, they need to commit, keep their word, to write a minimum of X amount of words a day. The average person writes between two and 400 words a day. Also, they need to give themselves a time of reprieve, even though they should write every day, perhaps one day in the morning at 6 a.m., perhaps the next day at 10 p.m. However, there needs to be a little time out and yet be consistent. A writer's pledges of allegiance is having two sounding board advisors, two people who will coach you along the way, who would love to read what you will be writing. So example, when I wrote Everybody Has a Book Inside of Them, I chose two people who I knew wanted to write a book, and I wanted to know if what I was writing would be something that, that would motivate them to actually write their books. Also, it's essential to do something creative every week to be able to remain mentally stimulated. One other is you have to set a deadline. I belong to a writer's group, and I love this writer's group. However, I'm amazed how many people have been writing forever. And I ask them, do you have a deadline? And they say, no, I'm going to do one. And I say, well, good, because that's how you produce the book. It's like carrying a child. How long are you going to carry this child? It's a nine-month deal, and then pop, or shorter. Yes. So what difference will it make in people if they get the book that's in them out and get it out and it's successful. What kind of difference does that make in their life? Well, for me, I can tell you, I love, as I said before, I love helping people. To make a difference, they tell their story. They've been through a situation, and it may act as a form of therapy. It may assist in uh, giving them passive income. 
it may be allow, may allow them to become an expert and have speaking engagements as a result of it. There are so many reasons to write a book. And that is one of the most important things that they should ask themselves during their 30 days of thinking. Why am I writing it to begin with? Who am I serving? Who will benefit? How is this going to help me? And so helping me, people think when I wrote Everybody Had a Book Inside of Them or this one that, you know, I'm doing this for money. Well, guess what? Money is so secondary. When you help people, money comes naturally. Absolutely. Well, thanks so much. My guest this hour has been Anne-Marie Sabbath. Uh, her, the first book we talked about is called What Self-Made Millionaires Do That Most People Don't, 52 Ways to Create Your Own Success. And then we spoke about Everyone Has a Book Inside of Them. You can find out more about both of them at her website, annemariesabbath.com. Thanks so much for being a great guest on the Money Answer Show, Anne-Marie. My pleasure, Jordan. Thanks so much. We'll be back next week with another edition of the Money Answer Show. Goodbye for now. Thank you for joining Jordan Goodman and the Money Answer Show. If you have a question for Jordan, please visit his website at www.moneyanswers.com. And be sure to tune in every Monday at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time right here on Voice America Business. See you next week.